Welcome to Counters. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the creditor's payment period or the accounts payable payment period or the average payment period. These terms are used interchangeably. In our other lesson, we looked at accounts payable turnover ratio and it's closely linked to this ratio over here. And we mentioned that in the other one as well. So if you'd like to check that one out, you'll find the link in the description below. But in this lesson, we'll explain what creditor's payment period is, how to analyze or interpret the ratio, and we'll go through an example for you to understand it much better. And as usual, if you're gaining value from any of our lessons, or if you're gaining value from this particular lesson, please subscribe to our channel, like this video, and share it to those you think it might help. So what is the creditor's payment period? Well, this ratio calculates the number of days it takes before creditors are settled. So it's as simple as that. It gives you the average number of days in a given period it takes before you pay your creditors back. Okay, so that is calculated usually over a period of one year. A high creditors payment ratio or creditors payment period could indicate favorable terms with suppliers or an inability of the entity to meet credit obligations within a certain time period. Okay, so if you have a high creditors payment period and we know what a creditors payment period is, like I said in the first line, that this ratio calculates the average number of days it takes before you pay your creditors. So if it's high, it means it's taking you more days to pay back your creditors. And what is the reason for that? Well, it could be due to favorable terms with your suppliers, meaning that your suppliers are allowing you a longer period for you to pay them back. And that is why you are paying them back after a longer period, meaning a high creditors payment ratio. Or the other reason for having a high creditors payment period is because of liquidity issues that you are unable to meet credit obligations whenever they are due. Okay, so that those are one, those are some of the reasons why it could be high. This could be also due to a poor debtors collection period. And what is a debtor's collection period? Well, we have done it. You'll find the link in the description below. But a debtor's collection period is the amount of time or the number of days it takes your debtors to pay you back. And usually companies would require debtors to pay them back faster than they would pay their creditors back. So if you're collecting your money from your debtors faster, you are able to pay your creditors faster. But if your debtors are struggling to pay you back, you might have money issues or you may not have money in time to pay your creditors. And that is why you might have a high creditors payment ratio. Okay. And that is why you may not be able to pay your creditors on time. A low creditors payment ratio, on the other hand, is directly linked to a favorable debtors collection ratio. And that is why we draw the link between the debtors collection period and the creditors payment period. Caution should, however, be exercised because a high creditors payment ratio could signal liquidity problems to suppliers and potential investors. So if potential suppliers and investors want to look at your creditors payment period, they want to see how long do you take to pay back your creditors because they want to see the liquidity of the business. So we are saying here that a high creditors payment ratio, meaning you're taking longer to pay back your suppliers, could signal liquidity problems to suppliers and potential investors. So companies need to take note of that, even though we want our creditors to require their money later rather than sooner. OK, so what is the formula for the creditors payment ratio or the creditors payment period? Well, here it is. It's average accounts payable divided by credit purchases times 365 days okay so here are a few things about this formula average accounts payable some formulas might just have accounts payable over there so that's just a variation of the formula and then here the denominator credit purchases some formulas might have cost of sales or cost of goods sold and like we mentioned in the other lessons with accounts payable turnover ratio that it's better to use credit purchases because those are the purchases for this particular period that we purchased on credit rather than cost of goods sold or cost of sales because the cost of sales does not indicate that we bought everything during this period. Cost of sales might have a uh, cost of sales from the previous period, meaning that you bought the inventory or the goods in the previous period and it's brought forward to this period. So credit purchases are the items we bought this particular period, but on credit, right? Not on cash, on credit. And that's what we're dealing with here. 
and then we multiply that by 365. Now your example or your question might say calculate it over a period of 360 days. So you'll use 360. Otherwise, if it does not indicate anything, you just use 365 days. Okay. So those are just some of the variations with formulas. So how do we get the average accounts payable? Well, it's very easy. It's accounts payable at the beginning of the year plus accounts payable at the end of the year. And we divide that answer by two. Very easy. Okay. Accounts payable at the beginning of the year is the same as accounts payable at the end of the previous year. And you'll see right now as we go through this example. What is another way of calculating the creditors payment period? Well, we take the 365 days divided by the accounts payable turnover ratio. And like I said, it's closely linked to this particular one, creditors payment period. And that is why it's in the link in the description below for you to understand accounts payable turnover ratio. Just take 365 divided by the accounts payable turnover ratio if you are given. And you should get the exact same answer as using this same formula on top. Okay, so let's get into the example quickly. Here's an example. Here we are given the statement of financial position or the balance sheet. And we only have the equity and liability section because we don't need the asset section. We just need the liability section, in fact. And here we are given the income statement. And we are asked to calculate the creditors payment period of the company. Okay, so what is our formula again? It's average accounts payable divided by credit purchases times 365 days. Okay, so what is the average accounts payable? Well, let's go to the liability section. Under current liabilities, we have accounts payable. So we're going to add for the two years. In the right-hand side, we have 2017. In the left-hand side, we have 2018. So we're going to add for the two years, 30,000 plus 33,000. And then that answer divided by two, and it gives us 31,500 rand. That is going to be our numerator, okay? And then our denominator credit purchases, how do we get that? Well, cost of goods sold is right up here okay it's covered by this formula but uh there is cost of goods sold and here we are told that credit purchases is 80 percent of cost of sales okay so let's go back the cost of sales is 475,000 rand. rand so we know that 80 percent of that is the credit purchases now you may not be told like that in your question they might just give you the credit purchases or they may tell you that we purchased for such and such amount in this period and such and such amount was on credit or they just give you the credit purchases so you'll just use that amount so we take that 475,000 rand times 80% because we know 80% was the credit purchases and it gives us 380,000 rand. So we have our numerator, which is 31,500 divided by 380,000 rand and we multiply that by 365 days and it will give us 30.26 days. What does that mean? It means that on average, it takes us 30.26 days to pay back our suppliers. Okay, so if we run it down, it's 30 days to pay back the suppliers. And what is the other way of calculating this ratio? Well, we know that we take 365 divided by the accounts payable turnover ratio. And we calculated that in the other lesson that I told you using the link in the description below. So here it is. The accounts payable turnover ratio is 12.06. And if you checked out that lesson, you'll know that we got the same answer, 12.06 for this, for this particular question. So the creditor's payment period is 365 days divided by 12.06 accounts payable turnover ratio. And we get the exact same answer, 30.26 days. That is the creditor's payment period. Now, what does this answer mean? Well, in isolation, it may not mean anything, but you have to compare it, right? You can compare it to others. That is how you'll analyze this ratio. You can compare it to the industry average. You can compare it to your competitor's ratio. You can compare it also for the ratio for the previous year of the same company or for the past five years and see the trend, okay? So let me give you an example. If your competitor's creditor's payment period is 25 days, it means that your, 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 your competitor is paying their creditors faster than you. It's paying their creditors every 25 days while you are paying them every 30 days. And remember those notes I mentioned at the beginning. It may mean that you have a uh, favorable credit terms with your suppliers or it means that you're struggling to pay your suppliers on time. Okay, or if you compare it to the previous period, let's say the previous period, it was 40 days. Now it's only 30 days. It means either your creditors have become stricter or you have more cash on hand or you're managing your working capital efficiently. So that means you're able to pay your creditors faster. Okay, so those are the way you can analyze these questions. And I hope you have gained value from this lesson. And if you have, and you've not subscribed to our channel or liked this video, please do so and share it to those you think it might help. Till next time, cheers.